Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kelly Troutman. I am a certified hand therapist and in today's video we are doing part four of the seven part series about treating wrist tendonitis. So if you missed the first three parts of the series, you can find the links for the videos in the description below. I'm posting the links there, so check those out. Um, but we will get into ergonomics and posture today, so it's gonna be all sorts of good stuff. And let's get into it. So ergonomics and posture is also a really great thing for therapists to address when treating wrist tendonitis in particular. And when I say ergonomics, I'm not just talking about the office athletes or people who work desk jobs, right? Ergonomics refers to anything and everything that we do in a day, setting up the environment to fit our bodies and using correct posture and body mechanics when doing those tasks. So therapists have a lot of ability to educate patients in their posture and their ergonomics and their environmental setup to help them be successful in not only recovering from their current injury, but also preventing future injuries from happening. So it's a really great way that we can help our patients. Um, I typically like to have my patients have uh, somebody that they know, a coworker, a friend, a family member, um, take pictures of them while they're at their work environment. So you have to figure out, do you think the work place is a problem for them? Is that an aggravator for them? And that could be, you know, anything that they're doing repetitively. But if you can have the person working or doing the activity naturally, not posed, right? You want them to be in their natural element. But if they can have somebody take some photos from the side, from the back, just getting a glimpse of their posture, their positioning, what they look like, what their wrist position looks like throughout the day, that can be so helpful because you can really get a lot of good information from that. And it can be really realistic versus having them in the clinic just posed and looking, you know, kind of in a, in a fake way. Um, it gives you a real sense of what their posture looks like and it gives you some ideas for where you can make suggestions or corrections for them. So that's a really great way to do so. I also like to give patients resources about setting up the proper ergonomic work, workspace, especially for the office athletes. There's a lot of good resources out there. Um, I work for a large hospital and we actually have a video that we can send to our patients that has a video all about ergonomics and so they can literally walk through the video um, and set up their space and check everything to make sure that they're at the proper height and the distance from the monitor and all of that good stuff. So it's definitely something to think about and to find some good resources that you can provide your patients to look at at home. Something that I do get commonly asked by my patients is what ergonomic keyboard should I get? What ergonomic mouse should I get? Like they want to know exactly what chair, what mouse, what keyboard, all of that kind of stuff that they should have. And that's a little bit harder to give people like an exact item or specific brand because I think everybody is different. Their body is different. Their work habits are different. Their posture is gonna be different. Um, the size of their body, their anatomy, all of those things and not one piece of equipment is gonna fit every single person. Um, I do think that it's helpful that people at least at a minimum do not work on their laptop. Just not good for a long period of time. So they need to at least have a separate monitor, a separate keyboard and a separate mouse. Um, you know, the type that you recommend for them is really going to depend on the person. And I think getting a sense of what their current setup looks like and what their posture looks like will give you some good ideas, um, as well as, you know, what their diagnosis is. You can sometimes figure out where people are going wrong. Um, a lot of people will ask me if I prefer them to have a vertical mouse versus, you know, a standard mouse. Um, I personally will tell them that a mouse is like a pair of shoes, right? We can't have one pair of shoes for everything that we need. Any mouse, any keyboard is not gonna be 100% ergonomic if you do it repetitively over and over. 
because it's still repeating the same activity. So even if you have a vertical mouse or all the bells and whistles, you know, the fanciest equipment, if you do that repetitive activity enough, it's still repetitive in nature. So I think what I typically recommend is finding something that feels comfortable for you that doesn't put excess pressure on the wrists, um, especially with mousing or keyboarding, people tend to kind of plop their wrists down and type or plop their wrists down and mouse. Um, so I typically recommend find something that doesn't allow you to do that. Maybe roll up a dish towel in front of your keyboard so that your wrists hover above the keyboard instead of resting them down. Um, and be careful about those little gel pads because people tend to just put lots of weight there. Um, and same thing with the mouse. You know, you really should not be using your piece of form as the, the pivot point. You should be moving your whole arm to mouse. So those are the things that I typically instruct patients in with any setup that they have. I also like to advise that every time they're thinking about what they're gonna type, they flip their hands into a supinated posture and then go back to typing just to offload the tissues, give themselves a little bit of a break and, and prevent them from resting or crashing into the keyboard all day long. Um, so I find that that's typically helpful. So it's really gonna depend on your patient, their preferences, their funding, if work is gonna pay for it or not, if they're gonna have to pay for it, um, and what fits their home setup or their computer setup at work the, the best. It's, it's really just gonna be individualized. So I don't think it's easy to give people a specific brand, um, but yeah, that's kind of where I lie on that. And then the other important part of ergonomics and posture is posture, right? I think that most of us, if we are stationary, seated, um, if we're doing an activity long enough, we kind of end up doing this whole little like gremlin pose. Um, at some point during the day, we get lazy. We let our shoulders roll internally and anteriorly. Um, we let our neck and our chin kind of tuck anteriorly, forward head posture, all that kind of good stuff that puts us at more risk for repetitive strain or increased uh, painful symptoms or other injuries. So we wanna really encourage people to have nice posture throughout the day. So I tend to find that the majority of people have tightness in their chest, their pec muscles, their anterior shoulder, because we are always doing things in a forward plane. Those muscles tend to be tight all on 99% of people that I've worked with. The back muscles, the scapular muscles, the rotator cuff, our rhomboids, the latissimus, lower trap, all that stuff tends to be weak on most people just because we're not <laughs> typically using them as much as the anterior muscles. So I find that the perfect balance is to stretch the chest throughout the day and to strengthen the back throughout the day. Um, so I tend to recommend doorway stretches. I tell people, you know, every time you walk to the bathroom, take a quick second, get your arms up, lean through that doorway, stretch out your chest, your pecs. Um, you can also do foam roller exercises where you're laying down on a foam roller and you're doing some snow angels or letting your arms hang out in a T, touch the floor, not engaging the chest. That's the most important part. If your hands do not touch the floor, you're just working your chest muscles. That's not what we want. So the hands need to rest on the floor. Um, you wanna do that several times throughout the day because again, when we're repetitively working for eight to 10 hours, it's a lot of time for our chest to get tight. I also tend to recommend um, retraction as exercises. So I like to do chin tucks for patients, which I like to call it the double chin exercise because it gives you a little bit of that double chin effect. Um, that's something they can do at their desk when they're driving home in their car. It's nice to do it in front of a mirror because people don't really know how to do that motion. Um, their proprioception there is pretty bad usually, so they end up doing like this or <laughs> some weird combination. So have them do it in a mirror several times till they get it. I also give them scapular retraction. So thinking about squeezing that pencil in between your shoulder blades, pulling the scapulas down and back in their pockets. Um, sometimes I tell them, think about pulling your shoulder blades back and as if you were tucking them in your jean pockets, the back pockets of your jeans. Um, and that usually will help them kind of get that. Those are easy things that they can do throughout the day. 
You can certainly add more back strengthening exercises with bands. You can do retraction with bands, external rotations, ro like whatever you feel like is appropriate. But I like to keep it simple for patients because I find that um, I would not be very compliant with that kind of work. So I wanna give them things that they can do at their desk that they're gonna potentially be more compliant with. That's just my preference, but those are usually the things that I'll give people to work on their posture and then setting up their ergonomic station. So yeah, that's essentially kind of the gist of the ergonomics and posture component of wrist tendonitis conservative management. I do think it's a really crucial part, so don't skip over it. It's something important for everybody to think about and to prevent future injuries. So try to get your patients to buy into it too. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any other ideas for ergonomic tips, posture tips, any of that kind of stuff, please post it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another forward therapy, hand therapy video again. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.